Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson here at THSS Technology. Uh, today we're going to be finishing up our series on the isometric bedroom assignment in Blender by adding some lights and rendering out our final project. So let's get started. So here's the bedroom I designed. Uh, it's looking pretty good, pretty happy with it. It's a pretty accurate representation of what, uh, what a bed good bedroom should look like. But let's switch our view mode now to look at the material. So I'm going to hit Z to bring up our view mode menu and I'm going to go to material preview. Excellent. That's looking pretty good there. Uh, room looks nice. Nice little toasters. Every room should have little phone there. Award on the shelf. Uh, everything is looking good. So this scene looks nice and all, but this is not actually how our scene would look out in the final project. In order to do that, we're going to change our view mode one more time. We're going to hit Z and then we're going to go to render it up there at the top. And this is what our scene actually looks like. So as you can see, it's quite dark because no lights are in our scene. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Now, uh, some just quick little uh, notes about some important shortcut keys we're going to be using today. We're going to be using the number pad on the right hand side of your keyboard. First step, make sure your number pad is turned on by pressing the num locks key, which is in the, uh, uh, on the right hand side of your keyboard. And then one of the most important tools we're going to be doing today is the zero button on your number pad, which shows you what the camera sees. Um, but you can press any of the number pad keys and they all change kind of your view modes. But if I press seven on the number pad, it brings up the top view, which we're going to be using very frequently today uh, in order to place and move our lights around. Excellent. So let's go back to our just a standard view here by uh, using the middle mouse button. And let's start adding some lights to our scene. If I press shift A, it's going to bring up our ad menu. And in our ad menu, we have a light sub menu here. And there's four different types of lights that we have at our disposal. We have point lights, sunlights, spotlights, and area lights. I recommend you try all four of those to kind of see what they do and see if it works best for your scene. We're going to be focused today on using the point light and the area lights. So let's kind of look at both of those. The first light I'm going to add is just a general overall light to my scene. And uh, this value we might change throughout the, throughout the lesson, but let's start by adding an area light. Okay, so I have an area light now on my scene. I'm going to hit G for grab and I'm going to grab it on the Z axis to bring this light up. And already you can kind of see what this light is doing. It's illuminating in a downward fashion and around from the area light, but not above this uh, rectangle. So I'm going to move this kind of near the top and then I'm going to hit S to scale and I'm going to scale this light up. I might press 7 to go to my number pad to kind of get a good view at the top of my scene here, move it up a little bit higher. And that looks good, but it's still a little dark. So I'm going to go over to the right hand side here to my light panel here. Here we can adjust the color for our light and I'm going to adjust the overall power in wattage there. So we'll put in about a 75 watt bulb for that. Excellent. That looks pretty good. Um, so we've got some nice general overall light for our scene now and just kind of a nice little uh, a note. If you ever want to see what the finalized version of your render looks like, uh, this is just a, uh, a live render preview. We can go up here to the render men menu and then we can go to render image or you can hit the F12, the function 12 key in your keyboard. And it'll load up another window here that'll show you what your actual render image is going to look like when you're done. So I'm going to close that up, but I'll be going back and forth to that menu quite frequently. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to add a few more lights to our scene here. And uh, let's kind of start off by adding some light to our lamp here. Okay, so I'm going to press Shift A to bring up my menu again. And we're going to add a point light. This is kind of like a light bulb. I hit G and Z. And you can kind of see this is illuminating 360 degrees around our bulb here. Once again, I am going to go to a top view and I'm going to grab and move this light. And we're going to put it inside the lamp and kind of raise it up. And you kind of see what it's doing there. It is now casting light inside the lamp. Uh, but it's not casting much light on the wall, so we're going to create a few more of these bulbs. So I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate that light, and we're going to move it up on the Z. And we're going to move it up a little bit. So now it's casting light on the walls. And then, uh, you know, I think we need to a, uh, another light kind of down here, shining light onto the desk. So we're actually, I think we'll add an area light. So I'm going to press Shift A. Oh, I duplicated the light by mistake. I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to add an area light. Let's grab it up on the Z. Let's go to the top view. Let's move it up over here on the desk. And then let's grab and move it downwards, kind of like that there. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to hit F12 to kind of see the illusion that we're creating there. And that's all right. It kind of looks like we have a light in there. It's casting some light above the lamp and below, below the lamp as one would expect. I just wonder, is my toaster floating there? It is. Better fix our toaster. Let's grab that, grab it on the Z, and kind of move it down into our scene there. Oh, good thing we caught that. I don't want that toaster to fall off, cause a fire. Okay, uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add some light to my phone. Okay, but I'm going to do this in a slightly different way. 
First of all, we have a screen on our phone here. So if I go into our phone, and we'll notice we have two materials on this phone. If I go into tab, you can see if I go to my material tab here, we have a black material that's for the outside edge of the phone, and then we have a white material for the actual screen. But I want to create the illusion that our screen is glowing. And we're going to do this two ways. Yes, one of them is by making a light. The other one is by changing the surface of our phone screen. So if I go over here, and we'll notice our surface just above the color section is set to diffuse. That's just a solid color. But if I open that up, I can change it to emission. And what emission is going to do, it's going to create the illusion that the screen is glowing, but it actually won't emit any light, but it'll look like it is. So I can up the strength of that. If I hit F12 now, you can kind of see it looks like the phone screen is glowing, even though it's not. So now that we've switched it to emission, let's go back out to object mode. I'm going to add another light. So I'm going to hit Shift A. We're going to add an area light, grab it on the Z, go to a top down view, put it over top of our phone. And then now let's shape this area light. So I'm going to scale it down, scale it on the X, rotate it. And I'm basically trying to, trying to make the area light the size of the phone. We can move it down a little bit more. There we go. Our phone's kind of floating as well. So let's put that more on the table. Grab our area lights down a little bit. Let's lower its wattage a bit. And now if I hit F12, you can kind of see it looks like our phone is there, it's glowing, and it's casting a bit of light on the table. Move this up a little bit more. And uh, let's go back to the top view here. Just kind of move it a little bit this way. And let's just make it a little bit weaker. weaker. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. All right, what's next? Ah, the light from the toaster, of course. So let's add a light into our toaster as one does, because, you know, no one, everyone loves this smell of fresh toast in the morning when they wake up. Uh, so I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to add an area light. Let's grab and move that up. Let's go to the top view again. Put it over top of our toaster. Okay, that looks good. Grab it on the Z a little bit. Back to our top view. And then let's scale it. Let's rotate it. Let's scale it on the X. Scale it on the X a little bit more. Let's grab it on the Z and actually put it into the toaster. Now the problem is this light is actually pointing downwards and I want the light to point up. So over here on the right we have a transform panel. If you don't see the transform panel you can hit N and it'll bring up the transform panel. And I'm actually going to rotate it 180 degrees on the X which is going to cause the lights to point upwards. And that's what we're going to want to do here. Now let's change it to a nice red color. And let's up the strength a little bit. Let's hit F12 to see what that looks like. All right, that toast is looking good. Excellent. So the last thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some LED lights to the top of my room here. Okay, LED lights are very important in a bedroom. They make the room go faster. So we have these LED light strips that I've installed here along the top. And I'm going to add a bunch of lights to that. Now I could add one giant area light if I wanted to, but I'm going to add some individual bulbs so I can, you can maybe change around the colors or just kind of to teach you some new skills here. So I'm going to do that through point light. So I'm going to hit shift A. We're going to create a point light, grab on the Z, move it up. I'm going to do a side view here, grab it on the Z, grab it on the Y. And that's looking pretty good. You can see a top view there. Excellent. Um, and actually, let's uh, let's make that a uh, blue color. Okay, let's ramp up the strength a little bit. Let's hit F12 to see what it looks like. And that's a good glowing effect we have. So now I'm going to go back to my top view by pressing 7. I have my light selected. I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate, and I'm going to move it on the X axis and move it to the left slightly. Shift D, move it on the X again. Shift D, move it on the X. And then I'm going to select all four of these lights I've made. Hit Shift D to create a copy of four. Shift D again just to save you a little bit of time and then just like these last two shift D move it on the X and then I could grab two three four five six I can count shift D oops uh, shift D move it on the X and then maybe last two shift D move it on the X okay so now when we hit F12 we can see we have a nice uh, LED light going along the top there awesome like in the look of that. And you could add some more lights to the top. We're not going to go about that today, but you're kind of getting the idea today how to add lights. A lot of lights to kind of build our scene. You know, I think I'd actually go in and probably take this area light here, just ramp up the strength maybe a bit more. Hit F12 again to bring up our window. That looks a little bit better. Excellent. So our scene's done. Now the final step is actually to render this out as an image. And we use this window for that. Once again, how to get there, you can go to render, render image, or hit the function 12 key. While we're at this window, what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the image tab and we're going to go to save as image. 
okay? Now you're gonna wanna save this into your uh, finished work folder, but there's a few changes we need to kind of make here. So first of all, I'm gonna change the file format from PNG to JPEG. Now you might be wondering, well, there's two JPEGs, Mr. Goodman, which one do we use? Always ask yourself this question. Is it the year 2000? If the answer is no, use the other JPEG, not JPEG 2000. Give it a name, so I'm gonna call mine Goodman Room and then we are just going to click save as image. Excellent, so now that image is in your finished work folder, you'll wanna put one in the to be printed folder as well. Uh, but uh, that's all for today's lesson. We'll see you all later.